This conference will now be recorded. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Harwich Planning Board meeting of Tuesday, April 27th, 2021. This meeting is being held via remote participation only. Uh, online access is available through gotomeeting.com and may be available as a live broadcast on channel 18. Uh, this is being recorded, so it will be available later. Uh, our call to order and roll call. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 38, section 20, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Harwich Planning Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of ma members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access proceedings as provided for in the order. Let's take a roll call vote, if I may. Uh, Bill Stoltz? Bill Stoltz here. Arthur Rouse? Arthur Rouse here. Alan Peterson? Alan Peterson here. Mary Maslowski? Mary Maslowski here. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland here. Dave Harris. David Harris here. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick here. And Duncan Berry is here. We are going to start this evening with public hearings on the continuation of PB 2021-04711 Main Street LLC. Um, Somil Patel, manager seeks approval to modify state plan review special permit PB 2019-18 and PB 2020-31, relocate the fence from the southerly, properly, prop, southerly property line to just off the rear parking lot, attaching it to the guardrail. The application is pursuant to the code of the town of Harwich, section 325-55. Properties are located at 711 Main Street, map 41, parcel D8, in the C-V and Harwich Center Overlay Zoning Districts. This is being continued from March 23rd. Mr. Patel, let's hear from you first, sir. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Um, evening. Since uh, our last meeting, uh, last meeting I proposed a four-foot fence, uh, but since then I have submitted uh, uh, modified uh, plans to you, to the board last week, which proposes a six-foot fence. So I have met with uh, Peter Antonellis and his wife, Susan Antonellis, and uh, I understand their concerns. And uh, we um, discussed that, you know, what are their concerns and how can we resolve it? And we have come to a conclusion that if I put up a six foot fence, that would uh, solve uh, their concerns regarding uh, screening between the properties. So that's why I have submitted new set of plans to uh, put up a six foot fence um, for doing uh, screening between our lot and our neighbor's lot. Thank you, sir. Uh, has everybody in the uh, board been able to read the reapplication as well as the letter? Uh, any questions about that? Mr. Antonellis, well, thank you for your letter. Would you care to address the board? Please. Please. Uh, my only concern at this time is that the record, that is the agenda, yeah. the, uh, the staff yeah. report for tonight, still, still seems to indicate that there's going to be an attachment between the six foot fence and the guardrail. I think Mr. Patel and I agree that that really isn't the plan at this time. It is for a six foot fence, but it's freestanding, it's not being attached to the fence. It's of no concern to me other than I think that you want the record to reflect what in reality we're talking about. Uh, Mary, do we need to adopt that as a um, factor in the proposed findings? Uh, it, I, does it show it in the plan? I'm, I don't have the plan in front of me. So I can't actually see it on my computer this tonight. All right, I'm not sure, because I, I see it in the plan on page nine on the uh, PDF where it shows guardrail. I just don't, see, it looks as though it's attached. So, the, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, Bill Stoltz. On the plan I have, it shows 
that the six foot fence is not attached to the guide railing. It is on the um, the parking lot side. It's one foot away from the from the guide. Okay, what railing. page of the document are you on? And I have a I have a separate page to that that was given to me. Okay. That's an amendment. If I oh. may, Mr. Yes. Yes. Uh, the materials that were distributed as the packet do include a diagram showing that the fence, six foot fence, is indeed not attached to the guardrail. There is, however, also a document that was included in the packet of materials that I think shows an attached fence, which was used in the prior meeting, maybe with the Historic District Commission, and maybe even with the planning board back in March. But both, both documents, documents are there. there. certainly is one that shows the six foot fence is freestanding. I see it now. It's actually page 11 of the PDF. It shows yeah. a one foot separation from the guardrail and it's dated 419. So I'm assuming my, I'm assuming that it's correct. That yes, that it reflects is a freestanding uh, fence, one foot okay. away from the guardrail. Uh, so does, do you think that we require that then? I'll go back to Mary with that question. Do we require, if this is indeed agreed on? Yeah, we'll just add that to the conditions. Um, you know, the Mr. Patel, because he already got historic approval for the forfeit fence attached, he's going to have to go back to HCHC again to get approval on the six foot fence. Okay. Well, can we help them along in their way to this evening then? So we'll, we'll yes, I will put it in. I'll add a, a comment in the special comment. Great. But do we have any other comments from the public? Hearing none, and there are no more comments from the board. I'd be. Mr. Chair, this is the board. Yes. I move that we uh, close the public hearing. I have a motion. Do I have a second? second? I have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? Why don't we proceed with a roll call vote? Bill Stoltz? Bill Stoltz, aye. Arthur Rouse? Uh, for Rouse, aye. Alan Peterson? Alan Peterson, aye. Mary Maslowski? Mary Maslowski, aye. Joe McFarland? Joe McParland, I. David Harris. David Harris, I. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, I. And Duncan Berry is I. For me. So, Mr. Chair, I move that we vote to adopt the following proposed findings of fact. One, that the property is located within the CV and Harwich Center Overlay District. Two, that the relocation of the fence will not impact the site or the uses on the property and may provide for better vehicle headlamp shielding for the neighboring properties at the rear. Three, the modification to the site as developed will not adversely affect the neighborhood. Four, there will be no nuisance or serious hazard to vehicles or pedestrians. Five, all conditions and provisions of cases PB2019-18 and PB2020-31 site plan and special permits shall continue to be observed and enforced. Six, the specific site is an appropriate location for such a use structure or condition. And seven, adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided for the proper operation of the proposed use. David Harris, second. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed with a roll call vote. Bill Stoltz? Bill Stoltz, aye. Arthur Rouse? Uh, for Rouse, aye. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, aye. Mary Maslowski. Mary Maslowski, aye. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. Duncan Berry, aye.
Mary, do we have to do your amended site plan review special permits? Yep, so I move that we vote to approve with conditions the application and plans with 711 Main Street LLC, Sunil Patel manager, to relocate the fence from the southern property line to just off the rear parking lot. Uh, the fence shall be a six foot fence and shall not be attached to the guardrail. Uh, in accordance with the plan submitted to the planning board. This decision is based on the aforementioned findings of fact and the fact that the application meets the necessary requirements and criteria for approval pursuant to the code of the town of Harwich. Um, the conditions shall include one that the uh, special permit um, site plan review special permit be recorded with the Barnesville County Registry of Deeds that any plans referencing um, a four foot fence or a fence being attached to the guardrail shall be amended and shall be filed uh, prior to um, with the final asphalt plans. Uh, three, that um, all conditions and provisions of cases PB 2019-18 and PB 2020-31 site plan special permit shall continue to be observed and enforced. I have a motion. Do I have a second? David Joe Harris. 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 We'll take any one of those. <laughs> we yeah. got three. Any discussion? Let's proceed with a vote. Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz, aye. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, aye. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, I. Mary Maslowski. Mary Maslowski, I. Joe McParland. Joe McParland, I. David Harris. David Harris, I. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, I. Duncan Berry, it's a unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Board. Thank you. So, that uh, takes care of item public hearing A, public hearing B is PB 2021-06, Witchmere Harbor Real Estate LLC owner, Andrew Singer Esquire representative, has applied to amend to the site plan special permit granted in PB 2020-22 to convert 8,828 square feet of player's best natural lawn panels at the beach club to sin lawn plant-based artificial grass <clears throat> and to convert two approved panels of sin lawn totaling 1110 square feet back to decking on the lower level. The application is pursuant to the code of the town of Harwich section 325-55 site plan review and chapter 400. Property is located at 23 Snow Inn Road, Unit 12, Map 8, Parcel P2-12, in the RH-3 and R-L zoning districts. Mr. Singer. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Andrew Singer, attorney on behalf of Witchmere. Uh, we are here this evening for a uh, minor landscape change within the pool fence area, uh, seeking to change uh, several areas of natural lawn to uh, plant-based artificial grass around the concrete pool areas. Uh, this is for environmental reasons and practical reasons. The Conservation Commission has approved the proposal. The reason we're before you is that the town has determined that the plant-based artificial grass, even though it is permeable, does count as site coverage. So technically we are changing slightly the pre-existing non-conforming site coverage and amenities coverage at the property. So we're here before you ask you for the uh, previous 2020-32 to allow this. If you have questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the board? Could we hear from um, the Assistant Town Administrator with the staff comments? Yes, excuse me. Sure. I'm just going to mute um, caller 26 and hearing some wrestling papers. Thank you. 
Um, let's see. The engineering department had no comments or concerns for this application. The conservation department had concerns requiring mitigation, which have been through, have been communicated to the applicant and they're taking care of those. Health indicated that all requirements of 105 CMR 435 shall be met, and that is the swimming pool code for um, enclosures. Police, fire, and highway all had no issues or concerns. Um, planning staff comments, no waivers are requested, and administrative requirements have generally been met. Um, the Board of Appeals is scheduled to hear the case tomorrow. Very good. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Who was that just speaking? I'm sorry, she didn't say her name. I'm sorry, that's it's me. It's Megan Eldridge, Assistant Town Administrator. Thank you, Megan. I thought it was you, but I... <laughs> So do we have any questions? David Harris. Yes, you indicated this is permeable, but the town considers it impermeable. Uh, how permeable is it? How does it compare with natural turf? The, uh, the quick answer is it's actually more permeable than natural turf. Um, Dave McNevich is on the line. If uh, you'd like some more, more detail that we had submitted reports to conservation demonstrating that uh, it is a very permeable um, material, but because of how it is installed, the prior town planner and the conservation agent have determined that it would be considered impervious for coverage purposes. And so we included that in the calculations. Thank you. Any Andrew, questions? can I ask you a question? Please, Joe. The, the, uh, the two uh, towers on either end, uh, are, the, are they already up? I, I was by there the other day. It looked to me like you're, you've got those going up. If you're referring, Joe, to the construction of the Beach Grill restaurant, then it is under construction per the permits. Uh, that was, you know, we're not seeking to amend that. That is being built as permitted. I'm assuming that's what you might be referring to. Yes, it is. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions from the board? <clears throat> Any questions from the public? Hear nothing, so I'm assuming that uh, we probably ought to see whether or not what the will of the board is and how we'd like to take action on this. Um, Duncan, this is Mary. I move that we vote to close the public hearing. Craig Chow. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Let's do a roll call. Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz, aye. Arthur Rouse? Arthur Rouse, aye. Alan Peterson? Alan Peterson, aye. Mary Maslowski? Mary Maslowski, aye. Joe McFarland? Joe McFarland, aye. David Harris? David Harris, aye. Craig Chadwick? Craig Chadwick, aye. Duncan Berry, aye. Unanimous. Duncan, this is Mary. I move that we uh, vote to adopt the following findings of fact. One, that the property is located at 23 Snow Inn Road and is located within the RH-3 and RL zoning district. Two, that the Conservation Commission approved the changes proposed in this application with conditions pursuant to their jurisdiction. Um, do we have a um, an a decision number from the Conservation Commission? Can I ask that? Yes, it says they will approve. This is Andrew. I don't, I don't have that. Does Andrew have that? Um, I don't know if Dave does. There is a number. There is an, o, an um, SE number, uh, Mary, from uh, the state. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but it was approved and voted. Okay. okay. Um, so, all right. So. 
just to clarify, the number two finding in fact the conservation commission approved the changes with conditions pursuant to their their jurisdiction. Three, the landscaping change will not create any issues or hazards for pedestrians, vehicles, facilities, or neighborhood characteristics. And four, the health department stated that all requirements in 105 Code of Mass Regulations 435 at SEC shall be met. David Harris, second. Thank you, David. Any discussion? Do a roll call. Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz, aye. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, aye. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, aye. Mary Maslowski. Mary Maslowski, aye. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. Duncan Berry, aye. I don't know if it makes any difference to anybody, but uh, I'm in a room where I also have a TV on. I haven't got the note, I got it muted, and the selectman just came on. Uh, we're in conflict with them tonight, Joe, so they bumped us. Oh, I, I couldn't care less. I just thought people might like to know. Okay, thanks. So, Mr. Chair, this is Mary. I move that we vote to adopt. Uh, uh, to approve with conditions the application of PB 2021-06, which Mayor Harbor Real Estate LLC and plan entitled Plan Showing Proposed Turf Conversion at Which Mill Beach Club, prepared by Coastal Engineering Company, David J. McNevich, uh, PE, dated uh, March 19, 2021, sheet C2.2.1. The decision is based on the aforementioned findings of fact, and the application and the fact that the application meets the necessary requirements and criteria for approval. The following conditions are also imposed. A, all previous conditions under PB 2020-32 shall uh, remain in full force and effect and shall be enforced. B, any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals um, and any uh, hearing may necessitate further planning board review. Um, any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals shall also uh, be deemed a condition of this uh, site plan review special permit. And C, the special permit decisions uh, shall be recorded at the Barnesville County Registry of Deeds. And D, final as-built plans shall be submitted before any certificate of occupancy shall issue. Second. David Harris, second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Let's proceed with a vote. Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz, aye. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, aye. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, aye. Mary Maslowski. Mary Maslowski, aye. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. <coughs> Craig Chadwick. Greg Chadwick, aye. Duncan Berry, aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Nice to see you all. Nice to see you. Good evening. So we now move on to the public meeting section where new business approval, uh, not required plans, number one, actually number two, I believe, has been continued. We'll get to that in a moment. Item number one is PB 2021-07, Walter J. and Vonda L. Moberg as owners and applicants, and Walter J. Moberg Jr., owner, through their representative, Ford and Ford Attorneys at Law, seek approval to reconfigure two adjoining lots following the grants of relief by the Zoning Board of Appeals and as set forth in Mass General Law, Chapter 41, Section 81, K-GG, and more specifically, section 81.P, approval not required. Parcels are identified as uh, 1112 and 1110 Queen and Lane, map 75, parcels S5 and S6 respectively, and are in the R-R and W-R zoning districts. Mr. Ford. Good evening. Good evening. 
uh, members of the planning board, for the record, Mike Ford representing the uh, applicants. Mr. Chairman, this is a proposed uh, A&R plan to reconfigure the common lot line between two long existing lots, both of which already have houses on them. Uh, the house on uh, 1110 was built uh, circa 1740, and the house on uh, 1112 was built in 1916. Uh, so both of the houses predate the adoption of subdivision control in the town of Howish. Um, the purpose in the uh, division uh, was to make the lots more proportionate in terms of their area. Uh, one lot uh, currently was 43,000 square feet, and the other lot was 20. Uh, one now will be a little over 35,000, uh, and uh, the other lot will be approximately 30,000. <clears> They'll <throat> so both be limited to two bedrooms per the Board of Health regulations. Um, we believe the plan, uh, by virtue of the variances issued from the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, authorizing the new common lot line, um, can be endorsed by you uh, as an A&R plan in as much as the frontage has been approved by uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, alternatively, and in addition to that, the plan is entitled to uh, an A&R endorsement under the provisions of 81L, definition of a subdivision. Uh, this is a division of uh, land into two or more lots, each of which has on it a existing structure that predates the adoption of subdivision control. So I think you can sign this plan under either provision, Mr. Chairman. Correct. Anything for us? No staff comments aside from the comment from the health department, um, which Mr. Ford already addressed that they're in a zone two and must adhere to the one bedroom per 10,000 square foot rule. Uh, the planning staff recommends a positive finding. <clears throat> Members of the board, do we have any questions here? Mr. Chair, this is Mary. Hi, Mary. I move that we vote to endorse the approval not required plan entitled approval not required, prepared by Terry A. Warner, uh, PLS, dated September 24, 2019, and revised on March 19, 2021. Second. Uh, second. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. Hearing none, I'd like to call a roll call vote. Bill Stoltz? Bill Stoltz, aye. Arthur Rouse? Arthur uh, Rouse, aye. Alan Peterson? Alan Peterson, aye. Mary Maslowski? Mary Maslowski, aye. Joe McFarland? Joe McFarland, aye. David Harris? David Harris, aye. Craig Chadwick? Craig Chadwick, aye. Duncan Berry, aye. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you, you too. So the next item, I believe we have already have a letter of a request to continue from Susan Ledoux, dated uh, the 23rd. Um, so do we need a motion to do the continuation or is it just simply pass through here? Joe McFarland, a uh, move to continue. Thank you, Joe. Bill Stoltz, second. Thank, Thank you. you, Bill. Just a point of order. Can you, can we? I know it's not technically a public hearing, but can we um, put a date and time on it just to cover ourselves? Thank you. What, what, it's the will of the board. Whatever you want. What is the next meeting? The eleventh. Yes. Didn't they specifically ask for the eleventh? They, they did. Their request for a continuance asked to go to May 11th. Great. This is Mary Adver oh, that's, that we that, that's, what they, that's what they say in their letter, by the way. Right. Mary? So then could I suggest we continue until May 11th, no earlier than 6.30 p.m.? Thank you. We'll apply that second to your art, clear articulation. Any further discussion? Let's have our vote. Bill Stoltz? Bill Stoltz, aye. Arthur Rouse? <clears throat> Arthur Rouse, aye. Alan Peterson? Alan Peterson, aye. Mary Maslowski? Mary Maslowski, aye. 
Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. Duncan Berry, aye. Uh, we have uh, one item that I know that a member of the board would like to bring up. I'd like to open it up to this at this time. Dave, I did, was there something you wanted to uh, um, bring up to us regarding our meetings? No. Did you ask me that? Uh, well, did we not? Did we not have a conversation? I mean, I'm sure maybe I've. Uh, misplaced my. Yeah, I think you're talking about, Mr. Chairman. I think that was a conversation between you and I. Oh, excuse me. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Please. Yeah. So I'm. Um, this is Bill. Bill. Yeah, Bill. <laughs> and I'm hoping that that um, I'd like the planning department to try to get that our meetings can be held in the meeting room, whether they, you know, whether we have to call applicants in one by one instead of having them in the room at the same time with us, but they could be in the hallway and be called in. I think it would be better for the board to do, do it that way because I think you'd get a better understanding of, of what is being talked about and a better view of the plans that are being shown. So I was just hoping that we could uh, ask the planning department to try to do that first. Am, am I correct, Mr. Chairman, that we, we now have a new planning director? Uh, effective the first of the month is my understanding. Is that right? why, why, why couldn't we just ask him to make that happen? I'll second that. <laughs> Mary, it's, not, it's, not, it's not up to them, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay, Greg. Thank you, sir. Um, Megan, are there any state or, or town restrictions still in effect that would prohibit that? Or can you address that? Thank you. There, there are still state requirements that will, it doesn't prohibit you from meeting in person, uh, but it does make it difficult for an open meeting because you can't, you can't open a meeting and expect, say, 50 people to show up. And I know that's unlikely, but you have to expect a, a crowd, and there are restrictions on the number of people that can be in the Griffin Room. Um, I, I believe that the total right now is 16 people in total. Um, oh. So you could you could think in the next couple of weeks, months, to try to to have the board meet in person, but to have the applicants and the public there may not be possible for for a couple more months. Mr. Chair, this is Mary. Mr. Chair, this is Mary. Mary. Yeah. Um, the only other concern that I would like I would like to get back to meeting in in person as well, but unfortunately, when you're on a go to meeting app or a Zoom app, um, sometimes it is very difficult with the audio when you have people in a room and people online. We had a number, there were difficulties when the Board of Selectmen were doing it. Um, so I would just, I would just suggest that we be cautious when we're doing it because you're not, as Megan said, everybody isn't going to be allowed to come in. You are still going to have people on public hearings that want to comment that are going to be remote. And the nature of the GoToMeeting app will complicate it because you're you're not going to be able to give up that app right initially because of the the attendance restrictions so um, I'd love to see it happen I'm, I'm just a little suspect whether we um, can be successful in the next month or two with the, some of the restrictions that are still in place and it is difficult for channel 18 to broadcast live at the same time as a go to meeting they've run into issues with that as well so it's not it's not as simple as it seems dave i, I think it's an excellent idea mary but i agree i don't think we could, it, could get everybody in and then it, it might not be considered a public meeting thank you joe dave Yes, I've had a uh, number of other meetings that I've attended where they've tried to do uh, have both remote participation and 
a group in the meeting and the audio is extremely difficult to control. So I, I agree. Mary brought that up and I agree. Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes, as, a, uh, as a teacher who's had the pleasure of doing both in person and Zoom at the same time or whichever, I can tell you that it's 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 not the same. Uh, it's, not it optimal. it's not optimal, especially with children. So uh, I would I would say that we kind of I mean yeah, it's it's gonna open up a can of worms if we can't have enough of the public in there. But just by two. Seconds. My thought is that I think we've had um, an example of how a Go to meeting event is, challenges our ability to manage the public's interface with the board, and that resulted in a lawsuit. You know the what we're looking at with uh, what was in the new front page of the newspaper this week. Uh, I think that would have been handled a lot differently if we could have actually used the gavel, for instance, kind of a procedure, and. Um, Managed expectations better, but it's very difficult to corral people in this. So, I mean, I understand both sides of this. Um, and it looks like we're, uh, the governor's plan is talked about, uh, last I saw was 100% um, back to uh, standard operating procedures for, uh, in public facilities in the beginning of August. Is, am I correct in that, Megan? So, that is. We may be able to layer it in before then, depending upon if we can manage and estimate properly who's going to be attending. If we have a very thin meeting like tonight, obviously we won't have anywhere near 16 people. So maybe it's something we can uh, just dip our toe in the water and see how it goes. Mr. Chairman, Arthur Rouse? Yes, Arthur. Would it be feasible to have any meetings? I know it's still Weather-wise, it's so difficult, but any chance of having anything outdoors? I know I other cities and towns have done that. I think that might pose okay. some production problems for Channel 18, but... Uh -huh. so yeah, the annual have, meeting is going to be outdoors. Belmont Beach is gorgeous. We can all sit out on the jetty. <laughs> Well, I think we take that under advisement, um, Bill. I, I'm completely sympathetic to the idea. I think we all are. I think there, we probably face some um, practical and technical issues, and um, we will monitor this as we go along. And I think that's also important um, as the new town planner comes into um, office, I guess, next week. I'm hoping to get on the schedule and have a conversation about just such such uh, concerns, so definitely hear you. Any other discussion on the matter? Mr. Chairman, I just had one question that maybe somebody else in the board can answer for me. Is this gentleman uh, who's been appointed as the town planner, has he appeared before our board in the years past? Yes. If anybody, if anybody knows. He has, so, Joe. Yeah. This is Mary. He was the member. He was the um, representative from the Cape Cod Commission that presented to us when we first started talking about the DCPC in West Harwich. I thought I remembered he, that, Mary. Thank he you. Actually came, he actually came in and spoke to us. Terrific. Okay, let's go on to our minutes. We have March 9th and March 23rd. Uh, Megan, did you raise your hand? I'm sorry. Yep, um, you skipped over three, the continued hearing for zoning article parking setbacks. Yep, sorry. <laughs> it's mean, okay. Yes, we have a continued hearing for zoning article parking setback in the MRL and MRL-1 zoning districts. Please note the following article has not been accepted by the selectmen for the Maytown meeting warrant. The notice is attached. Uh, it reads article X, to see if the town will vote to amend the code of the town of Harwich zoning by amending section 325-42.L by making the following changing new text shown in bold underline and deleted language shown in strikeout. 
parking and loading zone setbacks for all uses except single family, two family, and single family with accessory apartment shall be as follows. For commercial structures, wheel stops for parking spaces perpendicular to or at an angle to a structure shall be located so as to provide a clear area of three feet between the end of the vehicle parked in the space and the nearest structure. Sorry about that, Megan. Uh, do we have any discussion here? Can we can we vote on this before they put it on the warrant? That's it's a good not question. going on the warrant. Say again, Mary, please. It's not going to be on this warrant, Joe. Yeah. They voted not to go forward with it. So why why are we approving it? Right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Bill Stoltz. Hi, Bill. Why, well, why don't we uh, postpone this until we can finally get a meeting within the meeting room so we can discuss it more more clearly and let the public have their say, too? I would support that. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Joe. Any further discussion? So, Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, through you to the to the assistant town administrator, um, would it make sense for us to postpone this to our first meeting in August, perhaps? Because assuming that we might actually have a an in person meeting by then, I would suggest you continue it to the first meeting in August. That that's your earliest possible date you'd be able to discuss okay. this I think, with a public. Audience. I'm just thinking so that we don't have to re advertise and, and do all of that rigmarole again. Sure. Um, do, we know what the, do we know what that date is? Let me see. Um, mm -hmm. August 10th. Move, move, to, uh, move it to August 10th. Move I'll the article to August 10th. Mr. Chairman. I have a motion. I have a second. Craig, discussion? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wondered that August is so still so iffy in the logistics of pulling everything together. If there is no uh, critical time factors around this, which it sounds like there isn't until the next annual town meeting, unless there's going to be a fall town meeting. But until the, the next town meeting next May, um, I don't understand if that there would be any great rush to, to put this on the agenda. So might we be better off doing it later or early in, uh, what is it, 2022 um, in anticipation of going on the warrant then? That way it kind of gives us a little buffer in case August 1st isn't there. And as Mary said, having to advertise it again and so on and so forth unless I'm missing something, and then there is some time sensitivity to this. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Mary, was there an issue about the advertising on this? Um, I have to look at the statute, Duncan. I, I haven't looked at the statute in a very long time with what the with what the timing is on approval. This is one that was referred, that we referred to, um, to the selectmen, and under the standard procedures, we would have to hold a public hearing. Um, for a zoning bylaw change, so um, you know it's, it's kind of standard operating procedure for us. So um, just making a suggestion based on I'm some of the comments from the colleagues. Wondering whether we should put it in the agenda of let's say a mid-July meeting. I'm wondering if we could put it on the agenda for a mid-July meeting to discuss the feasibility of what we're looking at in August. And if there's a sense of yep. urgency about it, we can then bring yep. it up in <clears throat> August. If you don't continue a public hearing to a date, time and date certain, then you have to re-advertise. So you probably want to re-advertise anyway, but that's okay. just that's not the point. Mr. Chairman, I'm not married to the date, whatever the will of the board is. Thank you, Joe. Megan, did you have something? Um, I was just going to offer the dates in July. You have um, July 13th or the 27th. I'd prefer the 27th. Lucky 27. 
as opposed to lucky 13. Exactly. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chadwick. Thank you. Uh, the only thing about that, if we're at the end of July and we're going to look to uh, have a public meeting with people attending in the Griffin Room on the first meeting of August, I don't know if that gives us a two week notice to, to publicize. And, and I guess I, I should have asked it as a question. Does anyone know if there is a time sensitivity to this item? Yeah, that's the question. I think the, let me just double check on one item here because I believe that um, in the filing deadline for an August 10th uh, meeting is July 6th, which means that we should have our discussion on June 22nd if we want to basically have a uh, August meeting, right? An August discussion. So my guess is that we should bring it up in the July, the June 22nd meeting so that it can be advertised by July 6th, which would then put it on the ballot or on the schedule for August 10th. Does that sound reasonable? Sure. So, and, and you'll do all this by putting it on the agenda at the appropriate date. That's the idea. Fine with me. Put it on the agenda on June 22nd, which gives us the time necessary for a filing deadline of July 6th, which then enables us to cover our bases for the first open public meeting on August 10th which is still in theory. So it gives us the chance at least um, it basically two months from now to revisit the trajectory of you know, the, the pathway back toward normal. And it still gives us a couple of weeks to work within that schedule. I would think that that would be a reasonable approach towards scheduling it. Um, and it would also be a reasonable test case for what I would assume to be probably more urgent cases as the summer wears on. Uh, where there will be concerns. Um, I also have a question for Mary with regard to the uh, um, the scheduling and what's what we can expect as a board as blowback from the uh, the suit that was enjoined by Mr. Winstead and company. Is this something that will occupy our board in the fall going forward? I would I wouldn't expect it to. I okay. think um, Megan, through you to Megan, Megan, I assume that's all gone to um, to council and insurance council, and they're um, representing us at this point. Uh, the public records request went to council as well as the the lawsuit. So yes, everything's in the hands okay. of council. Council. Okay. So I, I I would expect we'll hear when we need to hear, and um, sometimes these things. Um, get decided and go away, and sometimes they go on for quite a long time. So there's really no way to tell. Okay. I, I'm just I'm just upset about our past history of dealing with that particular applicant. I'll let it go at that. I think we'll find that we'll find out what happens as it happens, and um, you know, from from my perspective, as long as we're being represented by council, then then we're good. And the applicant, um, the applicant at the Royal, I'm sure, can proceed at his own at their own risk and um, pending any court decisions. So, right. By the way, I was by there today. They've got a fence all the way around it. They're going to go forward. Well, they have a fence around it, Joe, but um, I, I, they haven't come to historic yet, so they should have done that already. Um, uh -huh. So just as an FYI, Historic brought it up last week, so um, they'll, be, they'll be getting a letter from the Historic Commission soon. Okay, before we get too far away from this, can we get a motion to dispose of item number three here on the continued zoning article? 
I have a motion by Joe McParland. We just need a second and then a roll call. I'll second it. Okay, can we remind our what that motion is? Get it on the first meeting in August? Sure, to continue the meeting um, to discuss in June, on the June 22nd meeting, no earlier than 6.30. Excellent, okay. Mr. Chairman, a, a point, of, point of clarification, please. Um, so I thought what we had just talked about was meeting in June to discuss logistics, for lack of a better word, of when we might plan to um, reschedule the actual public meeting. It sounds now like what we're asking or what the, the uh, proposal is to continue the actual public meeting to June. And I don't think that's what we wanted to do. It sounds to me, Duncan, like what you suggested is the June meeting would be for us as a board, not not a public meeting to hear the merits or not of this zoning bylaw change, but to discuss, okay, are we gonna go forward in August and hold the public meeting? So I think it's important if that's, if I understood correctly and that's what your intent is, that we need to have the language correctly reflect that. I intended the latter. If somebody wants to amend it to make sure it, it, it does that, I, I have no problem. Great. I have no pride of authorship. <laughs> Can we have it so amended? And well, seconded. My I believe we already have the second on that. Can I just pipe in for a second here, Duncan? Please. The the reason to have a motion in this instance, and Megan, correct me if I'm wrong, because I have been and can be. To me, the only reason to have a motion is to postpone your public, is to continue your public hearing, your existing public hearing, to a date and time certain. If the board doesn't want to take any action on this tonight, you don't have to take any action on it. It's the only reason you would take a motion is to <laughs> so you are still in a public hearing and that you're not, you know, not having to re-advertise and go through the the whole procedure all over again, which, again, you may have to do. I don't know the timing, but, but right. I don't think you need to take a motion if you don't want to. You Excellent. Can just tell I, can with, if, if I can withdraw my motion if that's the will of the board. Megan, do you disagree with me? No, I, I agree. I was going to to interject and say we do need, if we are continuing or postponing, you need to give it a date certain. If you don't want to give it a date certain now, you, you don't have to take a vote. You probably want to re-advertise this as a public meeting if you're going to do it again in August anyway. So then it will just right. be a brand, brand new hearing. So I withdraw my motion. Okay. Well, let's just make sure that we get this on the agenda at some point in July so we can revisit it and advertise in a timely manner. Absolutely. Great. Okay, so now we can uh, discuss the minutes of the March 9th and 23rd meetings. Mr. Chair, I heard it was the March 23rd, 2021 minutes and place them on file. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, ready for a roll call vote. Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz, aye. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, aye. Alan Peterson. <laughs> Alan Peterson, aye. Mary Maslowski. Mary Maslowski, aye. Joe McParland. Joe McParland, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. Duncan Berry, aye. We have advisory opinions from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, how would we like to dispose of these? We have essentially two and a half pages, or one and a half pages roughly, of one, four, eight, nine, ten, it looks like, ten cases that are coming up. 
for the April 28th meeting uh, at seven o'clock. Um, should we read these into the record or is it simply the... No, Duncan, this is Mary, you don't need to. This is only if the board wishes to comment on any of these matters. And once yeah, before it's all notice. Speak, if there's yeah. anything else that you'd want to okay. comment. Yeah, it's just a notice, that's all. Yeah. Right. So it seems to me as we one of, at one of our meetings we read some of these aloud and I just didn't want to do it if it was unnecessary. Thank you very much. And so that takes us to old business. Do we have any old business? Got some old members, but not old business. <laughs> Uh, any briefings or reports by board members? I know there's been a lot of uh, activity at CPC, it looks like, Mary. Um, I can say, yes, yeah, CPC had its uh, had quite a lengthy meeting last week. Uh, it was really updates on status for all of the outstanding uh, matters. The um, matters are pretty much ready to go forward for town meeting on uh, the 8th. So um, there's quite a lot of uh, money up in the air for some uh, significant CPC projects. The, um, so I would encourage everyone to attend town meeting and, and cast your votes. Um, other than that, you know, CPC will, will uh, we've seen the articles and the articles are already placed on the, on the town meeting warrant. So. If anyone has Mary, questions on individual applications, they're all on online on the CTC website. Great. Mary, Great. don't don't we usually, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mary, don't we usually don't we usually have like a brief meeting prior to the annual mm -hmm. town meeting? We do, and I was actually going to mention that, Joe. Um, Megan, we typically post a planning board meeting for town meeting. Um, so that we convene just before town meeting and uh, are in a full public meeting so that we can meet if we need to to discuss anything during town meeting. So I just wanted to throw that out there and make sure that that's going to get posted for the 8th. Yes, I, I talked to Elaine about that today. Um, other boards are meeting that morning as well and their meeting posting just says 75 Oak Street the yep. football field and some will say the end zone and some will say um, the bleachers. So if you want to decide on a place to meet, just so you're all aware of where that is, we'll post that on the public, on the meeting notice. 50 yard Thank line. You. 50. <laughs> I heard that. Okay. We'll post it for the 50 yard line. Great. Are we <laughs> presenting anything that we need to uh, be concerned about this time? Uh, yes, there is that one zoning article for the design guidelines. Right. No, yeah. but I mean, there's no other kind of review of the board's activities or anything like it. Uh, okay. No, just the finance committee is is offering a report. Okay. Any other business? I will entertain a motion to adjourn if we are so, of, you know, such an opinion of so minded. So moved. Right, second. 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 We'll call vote. Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz, <laughs> aye. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, aye. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, aye. Mary Maslowski. Mary Maslowski, aye. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. Duncan Berry, aye. Thank you all. Now I can get out of the hot stove and get something to eat. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> go enjoy, Joe.